so I want you to imagine it's a Monday morning, and you're going to wake up feeling like you're going to be making a lot of money. I want you to feel lucky, you're going to make a lot of money. And I want you to type into Google, what's the price of Apple going to be in five minutes' time? You would think, in this age of analytics, where we know our travel times, our wait times on Uber or Lyft, where Amazon can recommend all sorts of products for us, we'd be able to predict the future of our stock price, wouldn't we? Well, wrong. It turns out that these two worlds, surprisingly, aren't talking. This world of analytics and data science and machine learning and all that good stuff on your phone, and then the world of finance and prediction. So this talk is going to be about how we can get these people on the same page, all these boffins in Silicon Valley and New York and London and everywhere else, all together, we can achieve incredible things. Like, for example, having a much more transparent financial system, the cornerstone of a healthy, functioning democracy, enabling people all around the world to have a global credit passport where people from underprivileged backgrounds can get the credit they need to start and build their lives and businesses, and to have a much more robust financial system, which just doesn't come and go with exchanges and economic regimes. So all this sounds great, right? But why aren't we doing it? Well, I think to answer that problem, it really comes down to the mindset and people. Now, I've worked on Wall Street for Lehman Brothers, one of the biggest bankruptcies in US history. <laughs> and I've worked in Silicon Valley with machine learning and all that stuff. And I was really surprised that there's such a different culture. Francis Bacon, the father of modern science, said, knowledge is power. And indeed it is, and indeed it's wielded in very different ways. In a finance industry, it's all about privacy. It's a very clandestine industry. Secrecy is everything. There's no incentive for these mathematicians and quants with their PhDs and all sorts of other achievements, math Olympia competitions. There's no incentive for them to talk. They're all afraid that they might lose their job if they say something. And over here in Silicon Valley and data science and the tech world, in my mind, it's got a little bit of that counterculture movement. It's all about sharing ideas. There's a spirit of innovation. There's a spirit of helping others. And that's why you have in your phone all these incredible apps. They're all based on the same common framework for analytics, the same math, the same computer science. And so here we have knowledge shared in a community with an incentive to innovate in an open way. And over here in finance, it's private. And there's no incentive to share. So what are going to be the factors that cause this to change? Well, change is happening right now as we speak. And let's take a little bit more of a look at the financial system. The financial system in the US constitutes around 7% of the overall GDP. That's about $1.3 trillion. Hires around 6 million people in this country. And it exports around $120 billion of financial services insurance worldwide. London, where I'm from, and the biggest financial center in the world, recently had something pretty bad happen. It's called Brexit. And this big financial center that we have, full of all these people working in the financial services industry, it's a very large number of people. And what's going to happen if this economic center continues the way it is? very exposed to, service, to the financial services industry. Well, the banking sector as a whole, both in New York, London, and worldwide, is really struggling right now to embrace new technology. It's working with these antiquated legacy systems, and it just can't come along and, and change like that in the way that Silicon Valley can. So what's pushing this change also? Well, it's also Google. Google's TensorFlow, its open source machine learning environment, is really a very powerful tool. And many are starting to look at this and say, well, yeah, but I don't really understand it. It seems like alchemy to me. And I'm going to go back to doing my math. I'm going back to, to the textbooks, because I understand that stuff. So what is our role here in universities, and what are we doing? Well, let's step back for a second and think about universities. If it wasn't for Stanford University, would Sergey Brin and Larry Page 
have come up with the PageRank algorithm that ultimately was the basis for Google. Without UC Berkeley, we really have Unix, the operating system in the computer that powers all the world's mission-critical systems. And without a Marvin camera, would we have the magnetic tape? Or would we have, for example, space reentry technology without the IETs? And my research is trying to address how to bring everyone together, how to bring all these different technologies, whether it's TensorFlow, whether it's any other type of open source technology, how to bring that together into the finance world so that it all works. And what's going to be the implications of doing that? Well, it's going to be very exciting to imagine that someone can get credit, not because of their FICO score, that's a measure of, of your credit, but based on the things that they do in life. You know, not just whether they've done something wrong in their life. What if you come to this country for the first time and you don't have any credit history? As I found when I came to the US 10 years ago, all that credit history I built up being a good citizen didn't carry over here. And so we can use analytics in very powerful ways to make decisions looking at much more information. What industry are you in? Are you a nurse? Are you an engineer, for example? That should factor in to your ability to pay a loan. And also, we want to catch the bad guys, because the bad guys really destroy it for all of us. Someone's applying for a loan saying they're hard up. What if I look on Google Maps and I see a Ferrari in the drive for the house? I don't think that, that this person need, needs the money right now. So we can really start to use analytics in a much more pervasive way. But we need to bring everyone on the same page. And that's why my research, we're working with, as part of this summer, we're working with Google Summer of Code to take our research ideas and take all this analytics and apply it to all these different types of financial data to predict financial crashes, to detect when someone's illegally trading, to be able to offer credit based on the much wider factors, the macroeconomic factors in the world, industry, growth trends, even what people are typing on Google. That could all be used to try and understand and have more of a living, breathing pulse on the way that the world is changing. And so I'm going to end this talk with one invitation. If you're interested in this, and you really believe that the financial system can do much better than it's doing right now, then you're in the right place. You're here in Chicago. It's turning into a major fin fintech hub. And so I'd like you to su subscribe to fintech.org. That's fintank.org, one word, F-I-N-T-A-N-K.org. And then you can sign up for events, and you can learn much more about what's happening in financial technology here in Chicago and, and also elsewhere in the world. Thank you.